Another breath. And begin to soften your breath and your connection with your breath. Letting that life force, the way that you stay alive on the planet, letting that in, nourishing you. Head to toe, inside and out. Letting that breath, as it comes down into your lungs, let it surround your heart. And let the teachings of today and the wisdom of the channels and the love in the room from the entourage of Cryon and the beloveds on the other side of the veil who are always with us who will support us and watch us who uplift us with their light let that light merge and meld with your light let that wisdom merge and meld with your own wisdom and allow yourself to be honored by those who are unseen that are here, that honor you and love you and bring you the message. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. It has been mentioned that there are those who are unseen that know who you are who are here and I mean here if you're a visitor listening to this later here means here for you as well this is a sacred space that you have decided to listen to and if you continue listening, all of the energies that are in this room at the moment are yours as well. Humans, everyone, respected, honored, everyone. There is an entourage that doesn't just accompany me. It's an entourage that is developed from the various soul energies in the room. An entourage that comes to watch, honor, sometimes seemingly sit in your lap, knock on your nose, <laughs> just to say, we're here, we're here, we're here. Years ago I said it, you're never alone. We mean this, it's impossible. Because of the system that is spiritual, the system, if you wish, of God, you come to a place and you finally understand and realize number one you're part of the system number two you're here temporarily this soul journeying that you do you're here temporarily until the next journey in the next life same soul and so dear ones we're looking at ancients among you and there is so much honor that you made it, that you've come, that you're here. We wish to extend the teaching from last week. Now, if you had no idea what that was, it's fine. We always start as though you don't, so that we can be complete. With those who would listen to one message, you wouldn't have to then listen to others. Last week, we introduced you to the concept of clearing that which we call your Akash. Now, let me define Akash yet again. And in order to do this, we always will do this. We posture this with great, great honor and respect for what it means inside you, human being, right now, there is an active record of everything you've ever done on this planet everything it lands eventually 
in your DNA as you reincarnate the last lifetime is then included and you come in with that fresh everything that you have ever experienced is there and as we've taught before it's not a linear representation as you'd get in a book the Akashic record is not about the activities of a human it's about the energies what was it like for you short lifetimes long ones various places of the planet different cultures different faces different languages different food what was it like to be in the wars to be a warrior and kill others to be on the battlefield and be killed all of you were all of you what's it like to be drowned so many of you were what's it like to lose children and you would say that must be awful it is it still is but when you come into a planet where every other child lives you don't even name them till they're three months old what's it like what's it like to wake up and realize that you have information as an old soul that goes against that which is taught about God do you shut up or do you not what's it like to be ostracized away from anyone else in the village to live alone and only be kept alive because you have the magic they think because you have the intuition to keep them alive perhaps some potions some information from Gaia and the earth to heal those around you this is your life this is who I talk to old soul what's it like for me to tell you there are civilizations you lived in you have no idea about and yet your Akash carries them all and the information that is in this multi-dimensional space of storage within every single human listening now that information is profound with energy what kind of energy is it well it's remembered things we've talking about this before we've we've said the difference between the Akashic Records reaction and what it means ten years ago and today is vastly different that's what's changing in an older energy the Akashic record comes up and it then gives you information of remembrance and sometimes it's difficult why would that be Kryon why is the Akash so disturbing to some that we have to have readers help us to dismiss certain things in our memory keeps us awake at night it's difficult to work with why would that be what kind of a system does that and here's the answer it's a system of free choice as goes the consciousness of the human being goes the consciousness of remembrance of the Akash you remember dramatic things things that go bump in the night things that you don't want to remember feelings you can't you can't explain that's been the way of it until now last week we gave you information and exercise words if you wish and reminded you of the power you have over your own body and in this energy the appropriateness of reframing the Akash demanding in your own words that the Akash stop remembering the negativity and the drama and start remembering the beauty remembering the good times what it felt like for all of you as a woman to give birth what it felt like for all of you as a man to watch it the pride the joy the overwhelming beauty the benevolence it's there it's all there to command your Akash to stop with the old energy programs the tapes that play 
and instead give you something you didn't expect. Beautiful memories. It changes that residual buzzing in the background. We told you that. Now where does it go from here? It may seem like we're going to skip around, but I'm going to tell you what has happened to the Akash. What it became. Now the Akash has never changed, but human beings saw it and rewrote the rules. I'll tell you about that. So you have a bit of an understanding about the buzz that some of you have. But not before an update. There are those listening to this now who were there last week. There are those who not only participated in the exercise but will listen to the channel and participate again. Those who have never heard of it will hear it the first time and participate. There will be thousands who will participate. There will be some who feel something, as I said. There will be some who don't. Because timing is everything. You are unique on this planet. There is never a time when we give you information of one esoteric pill does one thing for everybody. It doesn't. It doesn't. Some of you must work at it and work into it. Must do it a number of times if you wish. Although, I'll tell you, the body hears it the first time. Oh, it hears it. Hears it and starts working on it, even though you don't think it does. Here's an update. There are some of you, not necessarily in this audience, but the ones hearing me now, who've had some interesting dreams all of a sudden. A dream that would you put you back into circumstances that were uncomfortable. Circumstances that made you less than putting you back into a time when there was betrayal, putting you back into uncomfortable work situations or things that happen and you're put back in the dream and there they are happening again and you wake up in the morning and you'll say this isn't really what I had hoped for <laughs> and now I have a, what they call a bad taste in my mouth for the whole day because that dream was so real I didn't need to go back and, and feel that all again Oh, yes, you did. And here's why. Because that was your closure. You had to go back. You had to look it in the face. Sometimes there are things you never wanted to look at. Some of you are not done yet. This is the Akashic record at its best. It's the Akashic record for this lifetime at its best. Things that have happened to you that you go back and revisit. In the Akash, a drowning a death or a time perhaps on the battlefield where you took a life and it stuck with you it stuck with you for ages and suddenly here comes the dream and you just feel awful you see I just killed somebody and I feel it all over it's the worst thing that ever happened to me I couldn't do that but I did it I could feel it or I was just killed or I drowned whatever it was and you like, what is the appropriate of that of that I'll tell you it's a closure it means it's gone that's what it means and if you're one who had one of those dreams, congratulations. It's working. Do you see how this works? It's working. You have to go there because you didn't want to face it. Even in a dream. You have to go there and be uncomfortable for a moment in a dream. It doesn't hurt you. But for those moments, the Akash is working with you to say, in order to dismiss this, you've got to look at it. And you are. Many of you. And in the looking at it, there is full and complete clearing. It's not coming back. Not coming back. This is the power you have today, and we talked about it last week. I want to talk about the Akash. It's beautiful. What a system. It's a system of remembrance. Can you imagine opening an Akashic book with one page? One page is everything you've ever done. Because it's multidimensional, the one page is thousands of volumes of energy that are multidimensional. They come flying out. They go all over the walls and the ceiling. They're not in order. They don't have to be. And you look at the ones that are different colors because they have different energies. 
Can you imagine going back and seeing who you were, what you've accomplished? Do you think that there's a measurement in the Akashic record, not of horror, but of beauty? Do you think there's a measurement of wisdom? How much did you learn? And how would you like to have that presented to you today? So that you can walk from place to place and not make the same mistakes. So you can know when someone's telling you the truth. When you can feel when you get up in the morning a benevolence that says this is a good day. It's a good day because I'm here. It's a good day because the sacredness in me sees the sacredness in Gaia. It's a good day because I know my ancestors. It's a good day because those who interface with me today will also feel it. And it may be as simple as you and your children. They'll feel it. You and somebody at work, they'll feel it. This is the difference between human beings who are always affected by the noise, the buzz, that in the Akash which is always there, that has always kept you away from the magnificence that you deserve. And we dealt with it last week. I'll tell you what happened in history. The Akashic record has been with you since the seeding of the Pleiadians. When you started receiving the sacred information from the very, very top, either original or you got it from an ancestor, and you started to awaken with spiritual knowledge, the old souls of this planet have always had it. You are the ones that hold this information. It's beautiful and it's simple. You came from the stars. You came from that which is God. You're seen by God as beautiful. And the God that you were introduced to, the spirit if you wish, the creative source if you wish, was so far above any consciousness that you have ever seen on this planet that you can't describe it. Pure love. Pure love. Shining brighter than anything you can ever imagine. All it is is pure love and compassion. So beautiful that when you return to the other side of the veil, you're part of it. You wash in the beauty of the song that plays that makes your heart sing with it. That's God. I can't even give you anything bigger. You wouldn't see it. You wouldn't understand it. That's God. Human beings began to evolve. Systems started. One of the first systems in this civilization you call Hinduism. We have spoken of this even in India where we for the first time reveal things. This was the original system approach. Later becoming that with Buddha. But it featured something. The Hindu system was profitless. Right to the source. You didn't go through anyone. Nobody had to do anything. There was an acknowledgement of oneness with everything. There still is today. But the Akashic record developed into something different. Enter karma. Karma is a direct derivative of the Akashic energy. Things that happen to you that then lay energy in certain ways that invite you to clear them. And the system would invite you to clean up that which you didn't want and work with other entities of Hinduism that would help you clear negativity to the point where you did not have the karma anymore. You could clear it. You could go to a place where you were in full enlightenment because you did not have any more karma. Now dear ones, do you find that interesting that that's exactly what we did last week? <laughs> it was a system of clearing the Akash. It is there yet today. When I arrived 29 years ago, 
One of the first things I taught you is that karma worked then, it's no longer needed. You don't have to remember any of these things. It's automatic karmic clearing is automatic kasha clearing. We told you, you don't need to be pushed around by any energies. At this point in your life, in the spiritual system, karma is no longer needed. That's controversial. But look at who you are today. You're coming in with full knowledge. You don't need things to push and pull you around to learn lessons. You're beyond that. And you come in clean, ready to go to work with that bracelet on we talked about this morning. You've got other things to do besides work with karma. Even this day there are those who say, what do I do about the karma? Even after I've said, you don't have it. You don't have to worry about it. There are those who will argue. I want you just to look at yourself and say, do I need it? Really? At this point in my spirituality as an old soul in this new energy, does it hurt me or help me? Does it hinder my path? Does it enhance me? You make up your own mind. Don't you find it interesting that it was converted into a system that then became karmic? Now what happens next is really, really interesting. Because now certain systems over thousands of years begin to morph the whole idea. I want to introduce you to the human concept of sin. <laughs> now you have something where you start humanizing the system. Humanizing is the word we mean that you reduce all of the parts of the system to fit within what you are to be that which is human nature as long ago as you wish as the Greeks before sin they made their gods dysfunctional in order for the mythology of punishment to start that then graduates and graduates and finally you have a god who looks at you and judges you for your behavior. Sin is supposed to be defined as anything that displeases God. And I have something to tell you that you may or may not grasp at this point. God is not a human. There is nothing like displeasing, pleasing with the creative source of the universe. It's pure love. It doesn't think like you do. It doesn't have the constructs like you do. There is no, there is not even the beginning of a consciousness that would even be close to what you have. Not even close. And yet, you have developed a system, a beautiful love of God, and at the same time, you've made God a bad father. Let me ask you again, again, yet again, would any of you take a child, no matter what they've done, and throw them into a place where they're going to be burned alive for eternity? <laughs> Which one of you parents will raise your hand and say, well, yeah, they've done some bad stuff, that's what they deserve. And there's not one of you, there's not one of you. And yet you place that on the creative source. Yep, that sure is is the way God works you say no it isn't the entire construct of sin and punishment developed completely and totally from the human mind a human beings construct put upon the Almighty creator of the universe does not work that way there were no wars in heaven and all of this literally coming from the Akashic record because the Akashic record has certain energies that when you morph these systems will create guilt now you are sorry for what you did that you feel in your Akashic record it's getting worse isn't it now you sit there and you don't know what to think if God is real is God displeased with who I am I had a dream the other night I'm not sure what it means but I'm quite sure I did something wrong that's why I had the dream I'm afraid 
I'm afraid I'm not doing this or that right or wrong. Never understanding at that moment in time. This is a derivative of that which is your Akashic record. The energies of your record literally were then converted into karma, then converted into sin and punishment. All these same reactions and feelings then getting lower and lower in a consciousness state to bring you to your knees, human being, where you're afraid of God. Afraid. There's an oxymoron here. It's just it doesn't even make sense that you would bring yourself to a place where you would fear that which was inside you which is the most benevolent gorgeous loving thing that ever could be there talked into it trained into it this may offend some that is not the purpose the purpose is to reveal and enlighten to open the box to unseal a grander truth that there is no judgment with a God that created you out of love where is it going next what's going to happen revelation on the planet compassion is coming reframing and rewriting some of these things that I've just told you that's what's going to happen I know this because I've seen it before I bring you this history to show you where this has come from what has become it these wonderful secrets that you had literally as a Lemurian some of you from the original teaching wheel had to go underground not be taught only be kept secret societies you think today are conspiracies they're only ones who have kept the secrets of what you learned in Lemuria and in this new energy they're starting to pop out you're going to see organizations start to reveal what they know and they're going to be metaphysics 101. You're going to start creating organizations yourself to teach these things openly, not in secret. And I remind you, it's one of the first times you've been able to do this without something coming after you or being shut down or worse. There are some who are still afraid to come out of the closet, closet light workers. They don't want to come out of the closet because the last time they did it was awful. And now it won't be. Now I'm going to give you another concept just to make it really confusing. If you're going to become a bit more multidimensional, dear ones, you're going to now have to deal with a different kind of attribute in your Akash. Stand by. <laughs> So let me reveal again the summary that in this new energy as bad as it has become the systems that gave you these things will start to be more enlightened in their approach. They will start to see that it's not commensurate with the love they teach. There will be a lightening of the load rules will change slightly as they have over the eons and decades it'll start happening again there will be a return to one of the original ideas that God is inside of every single human and and the respect of that will be seen as primary no matter who they are or what they believe that's what they'll have in common this starts a world that will pull itself out of where they are and have no war war that's the summary now let me tell you something you need to deal with there is the idea this this train of time you're on is going to create a train which is completely then enlightened beautiful clean clear ready to move forward in the light with brand new information now here I'm going to tell you something because there will be those who will ask this later when that doesn't happen for them. <laughs> this is accelerated advanced information about your Akashic record that you will have to deal with in the ways that you will have 
presented to you and also we will talk about it in the future. Time is in a circle. Always has been. Time is in a circle. Imagine a railroad track. You are on that track as a train, as a human being, a human train, and you are chugging along on that train. You can go as fast as you, or slow as you want, but the train doesn't back up. It always goes into the future. That track is always ahead of you, and what's behind you is what you've done. Now that's how you see it. Now I want you to add a little wrinkle to that. That track goes all around the planet. Forget for a moment that you can't put a track on the ocean. Just pretend. And then that means, that means that eventually your future becomes your past. Are you with me so far? Because you're going to start running over the same track in front of you that is your past. And what is it exactly in your past? <laughs> it's etched in stone in your Akashic record. And whether it includes one civilization or two, it doesn't matter. The concept is this, you're going to meet your Akash in the future. Some of you won't understand what it is and consider that everything you've done has failed because here it is again. Others of you will recognize it, aha, this is a fractal in time. It is laying on the track because the track remembers what happened. And instead of me absorbing it and taking it on and having to do all this again, we're going to clear it as we go. We're going to expect it to be there. And we're going to see it and we're going to clear it before it ever shows up. Is this too complex? Has my partner explained it as I've given it to him? These are the questions that only the future will answer. I've just given you something that's valuable so you won't think you failed, dear ones. Because those of you who have cleared and gone to this place where you say, my Akash is no longer there to irritate me and the benevolence is only there and suddenly there's something negative, this is the 3D human in the past who will say, see, it didn't work. Then you reveal you didn't expect it to work. And then you reveal and then you reveal. State of mind, how much you cognize these ideas, I'm telling you that there are things on the track in front of you for you and the planet and all these things that will appear and you will think it's a return to the past and it isn't. It's something that you're going to have to look at and say, I recognize this. This is old energy. Get away from me. You're not going to go through this again. Give it a name. Put it away. That's coming. Because you are now covering the same track again that laid those eggs of the Akash that you cleared. Will there come a time, Cryon, when we can clear all of the Akash, including what's on the front of the train? That's an Akashic clearing that would be past, present, and future. That is more complicated. And that's the next step. I'm telling you about this so you won't be surprised. There will be coming processes to help you. But as you understand it, when it comes at you, you won't be confused. You won't think you did something wrong. You won't go back into guilt. And you'll look at it and go, cry and said it was here. <laughs> and here it is. And you can laugh. Because it'll disappear as soon as you recognize what it is. It's a past karma that's in front of your train that you cleared. Therefore, it's a phantom. We'll even give it a name. Beware of phantom karma. Beware of phantom akash. All of that from your past might show up. Just remember this time and call it what it is. This is a complex channel. It's something that you may want to listen to. 
it's something that you may want to revisit just to hear these words I'm about ready to close those invisible ones are still here I want you to feel them for just a moment such congratulations to you if they could put their arms around you they could you could feel it you'd feel so much love he did it and they would give you a message to say don't fear the future they'd give you a message that say cast the old fears away they're not going to come back it's a brand new path one that you've never trod before one without predictions you're going to lay the track that's never been laid before that's what it's like these are the things I have for this day these are the things for you and so it is